The chemical strategy for sustainability intends to create a shift towards new chemicals and materials that are inherently safe and sustainable from production to end of life. In our November Camp Connection, Christina da Avila, head of the Sustainable Chemicals Unit at DG Environment, indicated that safe and sustainable chemicals must become the EU market norm. This would be a win-win for the protection of people and the environment and for the competitiveness of EU industry. Today I will further discuss the safe and sustainable by design theme with Anne Dierks, Director of Sustainability of CEFIC. Anne, could you please sketch in a nutshell the concept of safe and sustainable by design as perceived by CEFIC and the expected benefits for EU industry? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, the vision of the EU policymakers in the chemical strategy for sustainability is that chemicals are produced, used in a way that maximizes their benefits to society while avoiding harm to planet and people. And production and use of safe and sustainable chemicals in Europe becomes a benchmark worldwide. Now, this vision is well aligned with the journey to sustainability that the chemical industry has embarked on. As we have said from the start, we fully share the goals of the CSS. Now, the EU chemical industry sees safe and sustainable by design as an innovation process to accelerate widespread market uptake of new and alternative chemical products and technologies that deliver greater consumer confidence in their safety, environmental and societal benefits, and advance the transition towards a circular economy and climate neutral society. A great vision. In existing regulations, a lot of attention is already placed on safety criteria. What is the current progress in defining sustainability criteria for chemicals, materials and products? And which sustainability parameters can we expect? Indeed, the requirements or criteria placed on safety are dictated by law. And let's not forget, Europe has the most advanced chemicals legislation in the world. Which doesn't mean that the chemical industry is not already looking into the future and innovating beyond these strict requirements, including the use of digital means to accelerate the development of new molecules. It doesn't mean that sustainability is being neglected in policymaking. You can see that the European Commission is already mainstreaming sustainability in all of its priorities, and rightly so. Think environmental policies, product policies, climate policies, trade policies, financial and corporate governance, etc. The methodologies, tools and data to assess sustainability have not yet reached the same level of maturity or advancement as policy developments. And they need further development and further harmonization. Having said this, it's already obvious what the directions will be if you take a closer look at product legislation. The batteries legislation, regulation is a good example. And another announced initiative such as the textile strategy. And this sustainable products initiative will reform the eco-design. So reducing carbon footprints, striving for circular value chains are for sure evergreens. Other dimensions or criteria to consider are emissions to air water, soil, or impacts on biodiversity and ecosystems. However, it is important to mention that we strive towards a multidimensional sustainability assessment to prevent that an improvement in one of the dimensions may have unintended negative impacts on the other sustainability dimensions. Safety, of course, can never be compromised. Okay, looking into safe and sustainable by design, we can identify several aspects in the product life cycle that are impacting safety and sustainability. Like the exploration of raw materials, the manufacturing footprint, processing, the use and end of life. Which aspects would you consider the most challenging and how can a circular design improve the sustainability throughout the life cycle? Designing for safe and sustainable products needs to consider the full life cycle of a chemical. It needs to consider its use, as it is often in the use phase that the contributions to sustainability objectives are realized. Think about um, chemicals and materials for batteries, photovoltaic cells, blades of windmill, insulation of buildings. And in the same vein, the use phase often determines the recyclability or the circularity potential. Of equal importance is to consider the processes used to produce chemicals and innovative technologies to produce them more sustainably. Take, for example, chemical recycling to close the carbon loop or carbon capture and utilization, helping to decrease the dependency of fossil raw materials. As said, 
safe and sustainable by design is an innovation approach. It starts at the design phase and safety and sustainability considerations need to be integrated from the ideation phase onwards. Circularity being an important one. A nice example is the recyclability of carpets by one of our members. By altering the production technology, it became possible to realize a monomaterial polyester carpet or a dual material version with a reversible adhesive, which makes the carpets fully recyclable and at the same time lower the energy use. Not only will it be important to think about the product at the design phase, but also about collaborations within the value chain and with the waste managers and recyclers. Circularity pushes ownership of molecules and materials into another dimension. Consumers are now storing the raw materials for future production. And we need to ensure that these raw materials make it back into the production chain. We believe that what we observe today is only the beginning. It's difficult to say where the challenges are. Perhaps the most important challenge is bringing the solution to the market which requires that our downstream users are also have to buy in into the safe and sustainable by design and circularity concept. Absolutely. Boosting innovation for safe and sustainable chemicals is an objective of the chemical strategy for sustainability. How can this be achieved? Well, luckily the chemical industry doesn't start from a blank page. So many of our member companies are already on this journey. In particular, we can build on the work done by pioneer companies under the umbrella of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development that led to a methodology and framework to assess the sustainability of the company's portfolio. Safety as well as sustainability considerations are part of this assessment and the assessment result can then be used to identify innovation needs. The European chemical industry was and is pleased to see the emphasis that the CSS has put on the innovating, on innovation towards safe and sustainable chemicals, materials and products. In particular, we welcome the efforts to put forward a methodology to find criteria and the definition of the criteria itself. And we see this as an important first step towards a common harmonized framework and harmonized approach which will help mainstreaming and accelerating sustainability innovations. We are looking forward to the second stakeholder workshop in this respect that the Commission is organizing on the second, uh, 22nd of March on the topic. Now we are also pleased to see the financial support through Horizon Europe, Cohesion Policy, LIFE programme, other relevant EU funding and investment industries that was announced in the CSS. And one action which we like in particular is the establishment of a support network to promote cooperation and sharing of information across sectors and the value chain. And we will be part of that. We also need to find market incentives to make sure that safe and sustainable products bring value through the entire value chain and become the norm. We also need new collaborations ways with value chains and we need solid, comprehensive and harmonized criteria to standardize the approach. It's not only about sustainability, it's about competitive sustainability. We believe the EU should engage in a genuine foreign chemicals policy whereby safe and sustainable chemicals would become the EU's global trademark, allowing EU companies and SMEs to differentiate themselves. Interesting. Demand for innovation towards a safe and sustainable design can also be triggered by investors of the value chain. Are investors already asking this and is there confidence by investors that the EU strategy will be beneficial for them? I already mentioned that an increasing amount of chemical companies, we are already more than 20, are implementing a portfolio sustainable assessment methodology following the WBCSD framework or, or having an alternative framework in place. Now, these efforts are increasingly being reported in the company's non-financial reporting cycle for the sake of informing the investors who are looking for this information. If investors are informed and interested, and if we get it right on the SSBD criteria for innovation, we may have a recipe for success. However, you're right, it requires investors to be confident that the EU strategy will be beneficial for them. And that's perhaps a question you should ask them. We will try at ChemCon Europe 2022 in London. Some stakeholders will advocate that a hazardous chemical can never be safe and sustainable. 
Others will advocate that it's about safe and sustainable use, assuming all phases of the full life cycle can be managed, including the complex end of life. Striving for a reduction in use of hazardous chemicals will not always achieve a more sustainable result. What's your view on this? Well, I think what unites us is that we all like to see more solutions being brought to the market that are safe and bring ever more sustainable benefits. Of course, there are applications with high sustainability benefits that do rely or even depend on hazardous chemicals. But that doesn't mean there is a safety issue. And it doesn't mean that chemical industry stops innovating for alternatives. And the mere physical chemical reality is you often need hazardous, hazardous chemicals, think reactive chemicals, to make non-hazardous materials. I believe it is very much a journey of continuous improvement through innovation towards our common goal. A journey it is. The use phase is an essential phase to understand, especially while you make a safe and sustainable design. How well known are the producers with the actual use in the value chain and how do they work together to better understand the life cycle? Use phase is indeed essential and a value chain has many partners and can become very complex, which does sometimes result in information that can get lost. Now, having information on chemicals that may pose a problem for recycling that will be a critical element to realize the circular economy. And that's where the possibilities of digital information transfer, think blockchain or QR coding starts kicking in. It is positive to see that the many initiatives to improve the flow of information throughout the value chain, including the recyclers, who in a circular vision are to be considered integral part of that value chain. And so transferring knowledge starts, of course, by generating knowledge and sharing data. And also here we see already good signs of some companies communicating on the carbon footprinting of their products. The challenge here will be to include also SMEs in this process. Great. Is safe and sustainable design an option for all industry sectors or will some sectors have to be excluded? Hmm. Well, as, as chemicals are used everywhere, I think it's fair to say that the SSBD can also be an option for all these sectors. Um, but I can imagine that the most pressing sustainability issues of today think the climate challenge or think sustainable transport, closing carbon loops, or sustainable nutrition will, of course, receive most attention. Is it too early or can you already see some great, safe and sustainable by design implementations in industry? Well, we do see already many examples of SSBD implementation today. And what I would like to tell you is I can invite you to go to our Civic website to read more. You will find many examples on, uh, to name a few fully, recyclable carpets, recyclable mattresses, turning emissions from steel industry into new products for the chemical industry. So I would say check it out on our website. We will. And thank you very much. We are all eager to learn more about safe and sustainable by design at Chemcon Europe 2022 in London.